making music in, in the moment. Translate the density of what was happening outside, inside, but not necessarily literally. Scrambling people's idea of you know where they were it gives this kind of space to think about the real world essentially. You set up a system and you let it run and you know what happens happens. I work with sound a lot and I suppose that's why they asked me to do the festival assembly looking at or listening to electronic music. I have a studio here at Somerset House. It's a very noisy place, but I thought, well, why not, uh, instead of trying to fight this noise, let's try to embrace it and integrate it. So I asked the musicians that are invited to deal with it. Often with Christian, when he invites musicians into his projects, there's always the visual quality and there's always the oral quality. People who function primarily as musicians don't pay much attention to what they're seeing whilst they're playing. And this is, if you like, the opposite of that. Camera tracking, data sonification, visualization, sound diffusion, and recording and processing where the bits are all put together and you know, maybe it's a way of like unpacking actually cinematic experience. Sometimes you see, for example, London represented in a different way in film or in games or in, or in a book or, or in music and then you, you do see or think about the city differently. I would say the location of Somerset House is really London. It's like, it's very busy. Pedestrians, car noise, air traffic, protest. Sometimes it, it can take a lot of sort of mental energy to filter some of that noise out. So it's more like you kind of putting a, uh, you know, say, you know, say uh, you know, a, a frame and you just hope that something interesting will, will come through it rather than opening it up. It's more actually just sort of zooming into things and hoping, you know, that something will pass, pass by your, uh, you know, stethoscope in a way. And you're sort of outside of, of reality when you're listening to, to music, you know, in some club in a basement or in some fancy um, theater somewhere. But here, I, I wanted to make it really about the city. You know, mi well, microphones, they reveal secret worlds. So as well as the outside, we're, 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 we're responding to hidden worlds, which people don't pay so much attention to most of the time. Then we've been taking that sound and reproducing it in the room through a multi-speaker setup and also sending that sound to the artists who've been doing all sorts of things like chopping it up, slowing it down, speeding it up, sending it around the room in different ways. The work is called Infraordinary and it's basically a series of rhythms generated on a drum machine which is augmented by a set of independent uh, sub-bass sounds that are triggered randomly using this uh, laser Kinect camera. So it took me quite a while to find out, well, what are the sounds that I can control and what are the sounds that I can't control? It's a kind of uh, partly fixed, partly random, if you like, piece of music. There's a great ambiguity between inside and outside. The non-street sounds is not, wouldn't, won't be clear to many people exactly what is causing them, what's making them, how they're being manipulated. So, I mean, we discussed earlier about trying to keep it as simple as possible so as to keep that connection with the outside. But this is a, a room that's sort of been turned a bit inside out.
And I've worked a lot with improvisation, and uh, for me, that, that's a natural thing. You, you react to all the sounds around you, and not, you, know, you don't come to a place with a set idea, but you, you absorb and react to what's around you. It might be other musicians, or it might be just a, a certain acoustic or a certain sound environment. So we made four different virtual versions of the Lancaster rooms that um, Robin was navigating in between. Basically one was an underwater theme, a doom theme, uh, a kind of extinction theme. Essentially the same space simulated in four alternate versions of itself. Being able to engage in the same space with a different um, sense of agency is quite liberating, I think. To use the outdoor sounds to create polyrhythmic uh, drum patterns. I've done that inside my gear, um, but I'm also going to manipulate live the feeds that are coming in to a degree that will kind of work alongside that. Because, yeah, reflecting what's going on outside the windows, I think people should stop and, and wonder more loudly, what the hell are we doing? It's a very uncanny thing of being in the street, yet in a room looking at the street at the same time. So this strange kind of shift in perception and perceptual experience there. It's been a really, really nice thing to be able to work on something that is without question specifically about London. There's a lot of um, emotion in the music and in, in the video that's happening and an overall sense of kind of um, loss and so on but the positive aspect is that you know that like literally in the performance there's a gathering of people there to have the shared experience you know I'm just trying to express something that I find interesting and hopefully someone else will do that and they you know it'll, it'll be like a mirror they will take from it with uh, what they they put into it themselves it's different for everybody it's completely completely unique John Cage famously said that if, if you listen carefully to anything, it becomes interesting. So, and you're looking out the windows, um, and this is the big show. It's right there outside, and trying to make sense of that combination of these live images of these passerbys, of these cars, and this traffic, and all this city activity is really the the visual and the music becomes this kind of soundtrack to the city 